speaking of all this cyber activity and who's doing what to whom, um, you know, a lot of people tend to think that the Russians were involved in the last election, they'll be involved in this election. Our next guest says, you know, whatever you think of Russia, worry more about China, Bush 43. Uh, writer Ned Ryan, he's been watching it very, very closely. He, he's been on Cannily Pressing about a number of big developments. So when he uh, unveils something, I pay attention. Ned, what are you saying here? That forget about whatever trade tips we have with China, worry more about what? Well, I, I'm saying, Neil, I, I wrote a piece for Fox News last week in which I said we should be thinking about smart home devices and Internet of Thing devices. I mean, this is a trend that's not going to stop anytime soon, Neil. There's about 8 billion of those devices right now. It's going to go to 20 billion by 2020, according to some estimates. I saw one estimate that showed about 70 percent of American homes by 2025 are going to have a smart home Internet of Thing devices. And by that, I mean a smart fridge, you know, smart thermostats, all of these things. And I think the question that we need to start asking ourselves is these devices are great. They make our lives better. Where is all that data going that's being collected by these devices? Where are they being plugged into? Who controls those platforms? Well, how do, you know, the asking, Chinese, how do you know the Chinese do? So there's one of the biggest Internet of Thing platforms right now is an offshoot of Alibaba called Tuya. Tuya is making a big play. And, and, Neil, they're getting 20 billion device requests a day. They just got $300 million more in a new round of funding. And I think we need to start asking, where are devices being plugged into? Who controls them? Do Chinese nationals control the platform that my device is being plugged into? Because guess what? They're actually being very open and honest about what they're doing with the data. They're saying, you know, your data might be accessed by third parties. Your data might be stored in overseas facilities, which might be in Beijing. They even say this in some of the disclaimer language. And I think we need to ask ourselves as we're moving forward into these conversations, because China is trying to displace us as the center of the world economy. They want to compete with us. What are we doing with the private data of American citizens? And I think we need to ask, do we really want the world's largest authoritarian police state having potential access to our private data because they have a close relationship with a platform controlled by Chinese nationals? And I think it's a question we have to start talking about. But nowhere is that on any of these various trade talk agendas. And I, that worries That's me. right. It, it should worry us because I think, again, as we move forward, this trend is going to accelerate, Neil. Again, like I said, we're going from 8 billion to 20 billion of these devices in the next couple of years. Overwhelming majority of Americans are going to have something like this in their homes. Where is this all going? And the great thing, Neil, is there are a lot of American alternatives to this. So I think in part of these conversations that we're having with the Chinese, we need to start talking about, wait a minute, we're not comfortable with where this data is going, and we actually want to encourage American consumers, but more importantly, American retailers, to be selling devices that are plugged into American-controlled platforms. And this is a trend that we're going to have to start talking about a lot more because, again, data is knowledge and knowledge is power. I don't want to be handing over my data to, to platforms controlled by Chinese nationals. Well, they'll deny that, just like they'll deny that they rig their currency or rig their markets or do anything to sort of pressure of U.S. Course. businesses to give away their secrets. So the long history of denying stuff like this, I don't see that changing. But, but they're being very open about this, Neil. And this is one of the things where I started asking questions, doing a mm. little research. Tuya is not being shy about it. They're being very honest in some of this disclaimer language. Hey, your, your data is being accessed by third parties. It might be stored overseas. And they're making a play for more of this. Again, it's hard to estimate how many of these devices are actually plugged into Tuya right now. But when you get $300 million of new financing, which they just recently got, they're going to be making a play for a lot more of these smart home Internet of Thing devices we need to start asking questions. And so when somebody goes to a retailer, whether it's Walmart, whether it's Target, whether it's Best Buy, start asking questions. Where is this being plugged into? And if you have to pay a dollar or two more to have it plugged into an American IoT platform, I think it's well worth the money. Yeah. Um, you know, ignorance can be dangerously blissful. Um, all right. Thank you very, very much, my friend. Uh, <laughs> Ned Bryan, Thanks, follows Neil. this stuff, was way ahead of this curve. It's a legitimate concern. Whether you want to politicize it or not, it is what it is. So we'll stay on top of that, whether it comes up at the trade talks. Again, it's not on the agenda, but uh, maybe to Ned's point, it should be.